Okay, this is Dr. Kim Lee Child, an adolescent psychiatrist from Australia. And today I'm making a video reviewing the Youth Start Entrepreneurship Program designed in the European Union. Now I came across this uh, program via a literature search on primary schools and entrepreneurship. And I came across some interesting articles by uh, researchers from Portugal and Austria who kindly pointed me in the right direction. Uh, so thank you, Eva, Maria and Andrea for uh, your kind feedback on how to introduce entrepreneurship in Australian schools, especially for primary school students. Now for myself, growing up in Australia, I remember uh, trading uh, basketball cards, trading cards. I remember trading magic cards. Uh, what else? I would also sell things like firecrackers to my friends. I'd also go to trash and treasure markets and garage sales to buy old magazines and comics. And I would sell them on after reading them to the local uh, secondhand bookstore. So I, I did learn about transactions and um, selling to make money. Uh, I also, within my own culture, being Vietnamese, we didn't have pocket money, but growing up we had uh, money given to us by our family and relatives around the Lunar New Year time. So we'd get a big windfall and we would um, spend that money how we wanted. Now, I'm going to share my screen and show you the website. So we've got uh, the Youth Start Entrepreneurial Challenge. You can see here that uh, they have a motto called empower every child and young person with our holistic learning program. And it's completely free. You can um, choose the activities for your classroom, for your students. You can choose based on their level of, uh, I guess their age and what kind of challenges you'd want them to do. Um, but I'd like to just show you their philosophy first, which I think is really important. It talks about what is entrepreneurship, how anyone can become an entrepreneur. They use what's called the TRIO model of entrepreneurship education, which encompasses three areas, three core areas, which are core entrepreneurial education here in yellow, the entrepreneurial culture and entrepreneurial civic education. And they have different aims in each one with personal growth challenges. So the challenges are here. You can see that there are three different areas and challenges that target what you'd like to do. So the core entrepreneurship education are things like um, coming up with an idea, you know, setting up a lemonade stand. Uh, I remember playing the computer game Ice Cream Soul growing up and learning about how to buy and sell the market, the hero challenge. We've got the market challenge here. I remember as a child in primary school bartering with people at the markets. I'd see my mum uh, and dad barter, you know, in the Asian Vietnamese culture, it's very common to barter. It's very common to ask things about prices and know what the going rate is. So I learned about the value of things growing up and trying to pinpoint um, the market rate, but also trying to find value in things that people generally didn't want to, didn't value or were throwing out. There's personal challenge, starting your own project challenge. And then in terms of culture, it's more the uh, empathy, the emotional side of entrepreneurship, the empathy, perspectives challenge, extreme challenge, storytelling, trash value, be a yes, buddy challenge, open door, expert challenge, 
and then the entrepreneurial civic education uh, values, which are community-based social aspects of entrepreneurship, the volunteer challenge, my community challenge, the debate challenge. They also look at competency-based learning. So in medical school here in Adelaide, we moved to the problem-based, competency-based learning. And in my specialty training as a psychiatrist, we looked at competency-based learning. And you can see here, the framework here is quite interesting. They've got three, again, three main areas. The first one is your ability to develop ideas, identifying opportunities, but also looking at your attitude, your entrepreneurship attitude, looking at how you can implement those ideas through working together as a team, the social aspects, and your ability to organize yourself, organize people around you, leadership skills. I think organization is a really important skill uh, as a child psychiatrist, I see that the people who are able to succeed in life tend to be able to organize their thoughts, their ideas, organize people around them, organize how to get help, organize and structure their time. And also thinking sustainably, uh, acting as a visionary, looking at you know what dreams and goals you have, philosophies, and then financial literacy. Actually, that's quite interesting. Uh, I'd like to know more about that. And they also have six levels. So they've got the A1, B1 levels, um, B2, C1, and C2. So you can download the competencies here in greater detail. And if you look at the actual challenges themselves, you can click on individual ones. You can find the challenges. Now, the, they're based on their difficulty. So level A1 is the easiest one. I've been recommended to start with uh, be a yes challenge. So I'll find the be a yes challenge A1. I'm not quite sure whether the way it's set out on the screen is the most intuitive. I'm not sure why A1, oh, that makes sense. It's just not set out linearly. So um, B A yes, there's three of them here, A1, A2, B1, and I'm guessing there's B2 somewhere. But um, let's click B A yes challenge here. This is targeting children at the primary school level, looking at language, personal development. They've got the teaching materials, but they've also got a little video that I'll play for you here. You can see, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but uh, looking at things like your strengths, positive psychology philosophies here. Look, I think uh, this can be adapted for the Australian market because this is obviously a mouse, but I think we could definitely change this to look like a koala in Australia. So it describes the philosophies and um, how they're doing the challenges, but then also the teaching materials here. I'll download that. Uh, I think I've already downloaded a version of it. There's a student manual here. You can see, look again, koalas, they look like koalas to me. This is the student module. Let's um, try and spin this around. You can see, you can checklist. It's what I like about this is, is it's very bright. It's bright. It's well organized uh, and categorized. 
and it's gamified. It's essentially gamified these challenges and made it easy for kids to navigate. It highlights very clearly what the challenges and the aims are. And it's very really clearly talks about the objectives and there's a lot of feedback. Now, my special interest and why I'm in this space, obviously, is because I'm a child psychiatrist. I also like helping children who are addicted to video games or have a gaming disorder, who spend a lot of time playing video games. And I like to look at how we can design teaching lessons, classroom activities in a way that is structured to engage young people and to help them to achieve things in real life and get that sense of achievement much quicker. I see a lot of children struggle with being engaged in class because they have poor attention spans and they're not getting the feedback that they need in a timely manner. And I believe that entrepreneurship in Australia isn't really taught as something that is important early on. You know, for me growing up, entrepreneurship meant getting money so that I could buy things that I wanted. I didn't really um, think about the social in impacts or a sustainable business model. Um, it was just more focused on me how can I get something quickly? It was more of a, a sales uh, and marketing type exposure that I had as a child out of necessity. It was only through my father that I learned about social responsibility, um, learning life lessons about how to be a leader um, through group activities, sports. I, I like how this is set up in a way that talks about your emotions with the child. Um, it asks open-ended questions, talks about their feelings here. And this is based in uh, positive psychology, looking at words to describe their strengths and focus on their strengths. And so you can see there, uh, and then there's the BES challenge A1 and 2. There's a specific uh, strengths treasure hunt here to help them to help them identify what their strengths are. And yeah, again, the key competencies and objectives are clearly listed there. And it gives you ideas of activities you can do. And it's done in a way that can help you learn in a fun way. So let's just go back to another challenge. There's be a yes challenge. I've also been told to look at the empathy challenge. Uh, empathy challenge A1, here we go. Let's click that one. It's targeting primary school level. Now you wouldn't think that learning about emotions would necessarily help you to be an entrepreneur. But I think it's really important to identify and be emotionally intelligent in entrepreneurship because you need to be able to identify how you're thinking and feeling. You know, entrepreneurship is a really uh, hard and often lonely journey and to be able to identify your feelings and empathize with your market, empathize with other people is really invaluable. 
Uh, let's look at the teaching. Now, while that's loading up, uh, here we go, it's almost there. Let's open that for students. So there's um, materials for the students. And this is all completely free, which is amazing. So we're doing the empathy challenge here, looking at feelings. Oops. The feelings giraffe. Okay, let's have a look. What is the feelings giraffe? Speaking like a feelings giraffe, expressing how we feel, expressing what we need, speaking like a jackal. So the giraffe must be the friendly one, the jackal must be the unfriendly one. Looking at uh, feelings, matching them up. How do you feel? I hear, I see, I feel, I need, I request. Got lots of pictures here. As a psychiatrist, often I'm asking how children uh, feel and kids who have difficulty expressing themselves. I often use charts like this for kids on the autism spectrum who may find it hard to describe how they're feeling. And as a child that is secure, it's important that you feel like you can identify your feelings, express them, and ask for people for help. So it's a lot of materials here. And let's just quickly look at the teacher materials. Okay. So it gives the teacher instructions on why they're doing it and how they're structured and how you can um, guide the students through the exercises. Now I want to just finish off by looking at the articles that I came across. So the first one is by Maria Pino from Portugal, where, because they made the U Kids program with the Portugal, the Austrian, and Denmark, and I think Denmark, Hungary, and Finland. So they had uh, five, five or six countries there. And they look at the entrepreneurship education. And I like how they looked at and asked the students about entrepreneurial attitude and looking at uh, how to build confident children. So they asked um, lots of questions before and after. The challenges were given to the children. And it's interesting to see that uh, before the challenges were done, that many of the children thought that being an entrepreneur, the important skill was knowing how to learn, the ability to learn. And I would agree that as a child, I thought your ability, your intellect to learn was most important. But I think towards the end, the attitudes, the important attitudes became more around how to be persistent, how to um, go through times of great challenge and how to ask for help. So it's interesting that through these challenges that the children fed back that they 
had different beliefs about entrepreneurship. Uh, so yeah, interesting to see what was important for kids and what they learned from the process. The other um, article was written by Andrea Business um, and Ava Jambor from Austria. And again, they're looking at the Youth Start program, empowering each child, how they came up with the program. So just quickly read this definitions. Sense of initiative and entrepreneurship refer to an individual's ability to turn ideas into action. It includes creativity, innovation and risk taking, as well as the ability to plan and manage projects in order to achieve objectives. This supports individuals not only in their everyday lives at home and in society, but also in the workplace in being aware of the context of their work and being able to seize opportunities and is a foundation for more specific skills and knowledge needed by those establishing or contributing to a social or commercial activity. This should include awareness of ethical values and promote good governance. Wow, that's amazing. These are things that we should not only be teaching children, but teaching in workplaces, corporate situations, hospitals, you know, as a doctor, clinical governance is a massive thing. Um, and uh, looking at the, the core model uh, aspects, the culture, um, education in terms of entrepreneurial education and civic education is really important. But, you know, back to the connection with video games, for example, is that I find that children love the autonomy of video games. They love the power that they get in video games, the freedom to make decisions and seeing how their actions lead to results and getting towards and working towards an objective. And whether they're doing that by themselves against other people or whether they're doing that in a team with other people is um, different from game to game. But what video games are really achieving success is providing this sense of power and autonomy that children get. And as children living in an adult world, games and video games make them the center of the world, make them the leaders, the um, change makers in the games. But there can also be very toxic aspects within games. It doesn't necessarily teach you the the civic qualities and talk to you about, you know, cyber bullying, the toxic aspects of game, the trust aspects of games, you know? So, um, yeah, I think this is where um, an entrepreneurship program can really come in handy and um, be really valuable in teaching children values and giving them opportunities to test and apply the knowledge that they're learning. So I'm going to finish up now. Thanks for tuning in. Um, thanks again to the people from Youth Start in Austria and Portugal for getting back to me. Thanks again. This is Dr. Kim Lee, child psychiatrist.